Another thing is toxicity, so um, chemotherapy and um, novel hormonal therapies have very different side effect profiles. So docetaxel, for example, um, there were even patients uh, where you would have to be concerned about infection and even fatal, fatal um, infection. So we do have to monitor that uh, for patients receiving docetaxel. They have to be a bit healthier. Um, and for the other agents, um, so they have in general, they're better tolerated than docetaxel, um, but they have unique side effect profiles as well, too. So, for example, enzutamide, there were about 1% of patients had seizures, um, so that's something that we have to monitor for. So, apalutamide, enzutamide, there is this potential CNS toxicity that we have to um, be mindful of. Um, there is a newer antiandrogen coming to the um, darolutamide, which potentially may not have that toxicity, and so we're awaiting uh, results of that, some, hopefully sometime uh, in the next uh, you know, year or two. So, um, Abiraterone also has a unique toxicity profile as well, so we have to monitor more for cardiac toxicity. Um, also, we have to monitor liver enzymes because you can see elevations of liver enzymes with the abiraterone. So I think, um, you know, definitely looking at the toxicity and to see which treatment would fit that patient based on their comorbidities and their overall health status, I think is another thing that we can look at. Um, of course, you know, financial toxicity is another issue um, that many of us are concerned about these days. And so I think looking at costs, of course, for the patient with out-of-pocket costs, and then maybe also considering the costs of um, the therapies overall. In general, if patients are on treatments for such as enzutamide or abiraterone for about, you know, 33 months or so, so um, that ends up being much more expensive than the, what we do in Stampede or um, Charted, it's only four months of therapy, so um, that's something to consider the length of therapy.